In the previous episode, we showed you our entire plan, getting our lightning truck to California, then driving it up towards Seattle, putting it on a ferry, getting off at Haines and driving it all the way to the very tip of Alaska. And we showed you our emergency plan of charging with the F-150 hybrid or at the campground. On this next episode of Northern Lightning Amps to Alaska, it's time, yes, finally, to turn our brand new all electric F-150 into an overland camping truck, which is why I'm here in Woodland, California at our friends at Four Wheel Campers. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you exactly the transformation of the F-150 Lightning into a camper. And the ultimate goal of the series is for us and you guys uh, to just take a journey all the way up to Alaska and be the first to take an all-electric pickup all the way to Prudhoe Bay, a very remote area. We'll be camping along the way. And this is how you can come along on the journey with us. At the end of this video, I'll show you exactly where uh, this geocache box is. So just stay tuned till the end. So this is the camper we chose. It's basically a shell that pops up. I'll show you everything in a minute. This is the Project M by Four Wheel Campers. So why did we go this way? So first of all, it's a relatively lightweight solution. It's an aluminum frame, and it's also large enough because uh, all the way to Alaska, there'll be four people actually, not just one person, but four people in two trucks traveling along. So we wanted something big enough for two people, you know, one sleeps on top, the other one here on the bottom. Um, and also have a lot of amenities like, you know, the fans and the lights and the rest. And also being relatively lightweight, that's very important because we need range, range, range. We don't want to add too much weight. All right, so the team here at Four Wheel Campers installed a piece of weather stripping. And take a look. Uh, the platform here that David built out for the center of the bed, uh, there's pretty good clearance, actually. The weather stripping, uh, of course, prevents uh, you know dust and dirt from entering uh, the bed and the camper itself. We may need to add some more down along the edges of the uh, tailgate here. So we'll, we'll be working on that a little bit. But I'm really happy with the way that this is fitting. Uh, and then I also want to measure how tall this thing is uh, with the weight of the uh, shell sitting on it. So let's check it out. So I think the truck squatted just an inch or maybe, an, maybe less than an inch overall. So I don't know if you could see that, but that's about 91. 91 inches, so less than eight foot, 92 maybe, but there's also the vents on top. So let me show you. So here on top, first of all, there are the rails where you can mount additional accessories. You could also put solar panels up here, uh, but there are also two fans. So all the way up to the roof is about 92 inches maybe. And then this, let's see. That's what, like four-ish inches? So that's almost eight feet uh, overall. So 96 inches. Four Wheel Campers has been in business for 50 years. They're celebrating 50th anniversary in 2022. Uh, and back in the day, there was just probably one bed size, which is eight foot, like a working truck, right? But now in 2022, there's many different bed lengths, many different bed widths. And for the Project M, they have the following little trim pieces for the tailgate. So we're gonna be bolting the Project M onto the bed. Why not use clamps? Well, we're going to Alaska, very rough roads. So we want this as securely mounted as possible. And this is how they do 
all basically that's what they recommend so how many bolts on each side um, so most of the time it'll be three uh, bolts on each side on a short bed truck uh -huh. um, this particular truck will have two bolts on each side because uh, the middle bolting area if you see on the Fords uh, the inside of the bed is not straight so this area protrudes out where uh -huh. we would mount it to yeah so we can't drill a hole there okay um, so what we end up doing is using the forward and the rear mounting locations for the Ford F-150s So Melanie, this is your factory and all of your campers are built here, right? Yes, everything's made right here in California. All right, so how does it start? Yeah, so uh, back here we're in our welding shop. Um, they use these jigs to put the camper together. They weld all of the framing together and then it starts making its way down the line to get the rest of the camper installed. Okay, so aluminum, basically square tubing yep. for the structure. And why do you use aluminum? Aluminum is very lightweight, very durable, um, and so it helps us make the most lightweight camper that we can make. And also strong, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. All right, so here's some frames. So you can kind of tell how they're coming together, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So there's just so that every single one is made exactly the same. Um, then the welder comes through and welds all of the different parts together. Okay, so then it kind of becomes a structure. Where is that? Yeah, so let's come over here. It kind of almost looks like a camper now. Yeah, so it gets its base. It starts coming together with all the different sides. Uh, and then uh, it moves to the next step. Okay. Here you can see kind of the start of the line. So the campers move their way into our production line and they start getting um, trim pieces, finishing pieces, insulation. Is this, um, is this Project M over here? Yeah, yeah, so all the ones on little rollers are Project M. So this is kind of what ours looks like. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And this one's for a mid-sized truck six foot bed. So okay. it's close, but not, exactly. Very cool. Right, and then as you work your way down the line, um, everything kind of starts getting added in stages. Uh, we. For our sliding campers and our flatbed campers, we have a complete wood shop that builds all of our cabinets uh, and gets that stuff prepped before it goes into the camper. Uh -huh. Then we have uh, our wiring department. So they kind of pre-build all of the wires that go into each camper. Um, it's really cool. These things are like mazes because there's so many different wires. Yeah, I mean, you have the battery and the charger, you have the lights, you have the fridge, you have the heater. Yep, exactly. You have, you have all that stuff. <laughs> Lots of different so things. So the wiring harnesses are here. Yeah. Oh, then, now the siding. Exactly, so then it starts to get its siding and its interior uh, finishing. Here's a Project M over here. Uh, that's kind of getting its siding and its finishes. And that looks like a six footer or maybe a bigger. Oh yeah, that's probably six and a yeah, half. It is, it is, yeah. Yeah. Is this as big as the uh, Project M's go or do they go no, bigger? No, so we, we do make Project M's for eight foot beds. So okay. very, very large cavernous uh, topper. All right, yeah. sounds good. <laughs> so this is where uh, the roofs start to take shape and get everything kind of pre-installed, ready for it to be added to the camper. This looks like it's a... I think this is for a grandy. This is an eight foot bed for sure. Yeah, that looks huge. <laughs> and you can kind of tell, you know, how it's made with the all the interior material and also the aluminum on the outside, right? Yeah, it's a one piece aluminum roof. So there's no seams, right? It's nice. Yeah, and so here you can see it starts to kind of take shape. All of the cabinets are installed. All of the wiring is installed. Uh, and it's kind of getting ready to get its roof put on and all of the finishing touches and appliances. 
And you can see some of the wiring already in, pre-installed in yeah, there. Yeah, and this looks like it's a shell model. So, oh no, I think it's gonna be a front dinette. And then this is a great example of uh, the roof now being installed, the vinyl attached. For the pop-up section, Exactly, right? for the pop-up section. And then there's multiple layers, you, or you can add like an, an, yeah, an additional layer. exactly. So the basic layer is an extremely durable vinyl. And then for the windows, there's like a clear section as well as a screen. So you can open up, get some air in, get some light in. And then we do also offer a thermal layer um, for all of our campers that adds an extra insulation barrier and light blocker. So do you know how long does it take to build one of these? I mean, is yeah, it hours or days? I or? think from start to finish, each camper is usually about a week and a half to a week, depending okay. on the camper. Um, right now we're producing between 23 and 25 campers a week. Okay, I gotcha. And you still have a lead time. I mean, if you wanted to order now, I mean, it could be Absolutely, yeah. We're placing orders into next year, 2023. Yeah. So it can be it can be a wait for sure. Yeah. And so by the time the campers get down here, they're almost ready for their new adventures. Um, they're getting their finishing touches, their QC, um, and all of those last things that make it be a complete camper. Yeah, and you can also tell, like there's weather stripping right yep. on the leading edge, so no no water kind of exactly, gets in there. Exactly, exactly. And there's silicone bead around kind of all all of the edges where yeah. water can come in and then i always think it's quite impressive um this wall of campers um, <laughs> <laughs> i know right so these are campers which are getting ready to ship out to our dealers or getting ready for customer install here in northern california and you have dealers throughout the country yeah or? we have dealers actually all over the world um okay. we have about uh we have dealers on the east coast in washington oregon colorado wisconsin canada taiwan germany uh, all over the place so it's not like I mean, you can actually go into a showroom and maybe see a model of it or yeah, so kind all, of experience it. Exactly. All yeah. of our dealers will have a showroom and it's really easy to find their dealers. If you go to our website, there's a dealer locator page and you can find the closest dealer to you. Well, thank you for showing me around. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys for being here. We're yeah. so, so excited to hear about your adventures. Yeah, I always wanted to see a wall of campers. <laughs> now I, I, I can say that I have seen yeah. it. All right, Dan, so thank you for installing this with your team. Can you kind of show me around? Yeah, first off, we have the solar, uh, fold out solar panel uh, okay. here in the sun right now. It's uh, charging the, the battery system right now. Um, right now you see the display says 77 amp hours. Yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look. display. And it was like at 97% or yeah. just a few minutes ago, right? Yeah, so we just plugged it in. Um, it's charging uh, right now about 40, between 45 and, and uh, 52 watts. It'll change depending on, on the, the sun measurement and the, and the cloud coverage. Yeah. Um, but right now it's charging, it's 100% right now, 77 amp hours uh, on that battery. Yeah. Um, but that's one way to charge it. And then the other way is with the 110 uh, outlet uh, charger right there. And actually because this is a lightning, we have 110 um outlets right here in the bed so if we needed to do that we could do that too yes. but but tell me about this um system so this is what i would call like a house battery right for a, for a camper or a motorhome yep. but this is more than that yeah so um it has a 12 volt agm battery in it okay um the display units right there uh it gives two usb ports and a 12 volt adapter um, lighter port right there. Mm -hmm. uh, once the power to that switch is on, it activates those three ports. Over here? Yep. Okay. Uh, and then it's also connected uh, to the power system of the camper. So it gives power to those four lights in the roof and the two um, fans. And if you're not charging this AGM battery, this 12 volt, how long about, can they like, can they run fans like all day? Yes. Um, it, It'll keep up with the demand of the fans and the lights um, for some time. Yes. You might be wondering why didn't we just plug in the camper wiring into the lightning truck itself? 
couple of reasons. First of all, the lightning truck is so new, we did not want to open any wires. And the outlets in the bed of the lightning are 420 volt and 240 volt. And the camper, the Project M, is running on 12 volts. So we decided to use the provided solution by four wheel campers. And then the top works like any uh, four wheel camper top, correct? Yep. Yep, the top is, is uh, no different from any of the other um, four-wheel uh, campers that we produce here. Um, the raising, the lowering is the same exact uh, way. The bed slides out the same exact way as well. Let me try this out. And then for the M, it does drop down into place. Like if you pull it all the way out, it'll drop down and then to put it back in, you have to lift it over the rail and then push it in. So it can be like, almost like a queen or a king yeah, size, massive. right? Yeah, yes. it's, pre it's pretty massive because you have all these cushions that can also be used to extend it and make it into a different size beds, right? Yes. And then over here, oh, I have just paperwork, right? Paperwork and you should have uh, two remotes in there uh -huh. for can the you fan units. Let's see, there's a, there's a switch here, right, for the exterior lights? Yes, yeah, so you have uh, two fog lights, uh, one on each corner of the rear of the camper. Uh, that toggle switch right there turns those on. Of course, Ford provides this tailgate step, um, which is useful here too. And on both sides, there are these rails, correct? Yeah, see, so you have uh, L-Track on both sides of the camper for mounting uh, stuff to the exterior of the camper. Um, what you can do is you can remove these caps and then the uh, same jack uh, bolts here can actually go in backwards into this rail. They're 3 8 uh, 9 16 bolts uh -huh. uh, slide into here, and then you can use those to actually mount stuff onto the L track. Uh, just like we did right here with the Axe Shovel kit, you'll be able to tell uh, here and here we use those same exact bolts to uh, mount that to the L track. So, this just happens to be not just a factory uh, where the uh, four wheel campers are built, but also a showroom. So I'm here because I want to show you what else is possible with campers. We have been around since 1972. We make three different types of campers. We make toppers, slide-ins, and flatbeds, and they're all made right here in California. And you started in Colorado because the company came from Colorado. Yeah, so. yeah. We moved here to California probably in the late 80s. Yeah. So that's the connection because yeah. we're from Colorado yeah. as well. So here's um, another version of the Project M with just a couple more accessories, right? Yeah, yeah. So this one has some additional options on it than the one that you guys have. So this has an awning on the outside. This has solar on the roof. It has some additional uh, gear tracks. Um, and then we have some also some aftermarket additions to this one too, like this bed rug system. Yeah, and this is also important, right? Because especially on dirt roads, um, it's really good to kind of cover this gap. Absolutely, yeah. The, the truck beds themselves aren't completely sealed, so it's good to, you know, take your time and make sure that you're not going to get any dust in the back. Sounds good. And this one has like, it shows what's possible with their, uh, the rail system on the side. Yeah, absolutely. You can mount different things like axes and shovels, the roto packs, max tracks. Um, so there's a lot of possibility there. All right, so now um, this is kind of the shell and this is the most lightweight and also the most affordable. Where do these start at? Yeah, so these start around 11 and then there's different options that you can kind of pick and choose from. 11,000, okay. Yeah. So now some of these, let's look at the mid-size truck yeah, kind so, of sizing. Yeah, so these ones you see here, um, these are made for mid-size trucks either with five foot beds or six foot beds. Um, so for Tacomas and some smaller other trucks like Colorados and uh -huh. things like that. Um, so this one here that you're looking at is an example of a, a very small one. So that's for a five foot bed. So this is kind of the smallest camper that will make. Okay, and it's still a pop-up, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and so with the slide-ins, um, kind of the main options is you get a fully built-out camper with a kitchen and water and a refrigerator and kind of all the onboard amenities. And also portable, you know, toilet right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you can add portable toilets, yeah. and some of them you can even have showers in them too, and built-in toilets. Totally, so if you do have your Tacoma with a five-foot bed, bam, yep. it's right there. That's it, everything you need. Okay, so now let's go to some of the bigger ones, and finally, you know, the flat beds were just the largest ones. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the Hawk. Um, the Hawk is m kind of the most common one that we sell because it's the most common truck size. So it's for a full size truck, um, six and a half foot bed. Uh, there's different seating configurations. There's different options in there and um, very similar to our other slide ins. It's just fully featured. It has everything you need to be comfortable in there. But we also do offer some simpler versions that don't have all of the amenities. So there's something for everybody. 
All right, and what is the pricing like for the mid-size truck versus like a full-size truck uh, slide-ins? Yeah, so the pricing is, is is actually the same. The only time the pricing kind of jumps is when you get to the eight-foot beds because those are much larger. Okay, and the like we saw in the factory, their construction is the same, right? Aluminum frames, yep, exactly. All the composites. Yep, exactly. Aluminum framed. Um, in the topper, the Project M, there's no wood construction, so it's all composite or aluminum. Whereas the slide in campers, they do have some wood in the build for the cabinetry and things like for that. For inside of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I gotcha. The slide in campers, they're around twenty six thousand, depending on the size of the truck, and then all the other options you can add and pick and choose, um, and it's kind of up from there. Yeah, and here, for example, the one we're in here, this is a six and a half foot bed. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so that's kind of the starting price. And also the weights are important. We chose the Project M because it was just a shell and it was quite lightweight, what, under 400 pounds. These can be, you know, 1,100 pounds or a little bit more with equipment. But still, if you consider this, most uh, full-size half-ton trucks are capable of carrying one. Absolutely. But of course, heavy-duty trucks, that's easy work for a heavy-duty truck. I also want to mention different siding options, different colors, right? Because I see totally wild different styles. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the kind of the white one down there is our original styling, um, kind of more classic look. Um, and then several years after that, we added the silver spur, which is a little bit more modern. Um, and then recently we've added all of these smooth aluminum sidings. They're available in lots of different colors. Um, it's really great because you get to kind of customize and pick and match and match your truck. And most of these campers are to order, right? You kind of specify what you want, the equipment, Accessories, yeah, all that. Yeah, exactly. Everything is made to order. So um, it's very rare that there are just stock campers available to take off the floor. So um, what's cool about that is that every time an order is placed, the person gets to pick exactly how they want their camper to be built. So this is the one you were talking about, kind of the classic look outside. Yeah. Uh, but let's look inside because this is what you call a shell? Yeah, so we call this a shell model. And so what that means is that um, it has very simple options on the inside. So there's no built-in water, um, there's no built-in kitchen. You can kind of choose some simple options. You can still get a stove and a furnace, which is nice. You can get it with or without seating. And this is great for people that want to keep it simple or if you want to build it out yourself, build your own cabinets, build your own system. Um, this is a really great uh, blank slate to be able to do that. But the concept is still the same, still sliding bed. So you can expand it and I actually like this. I haven't seen one like this because normally the dinette is going to be by the bulkhead. Yeah, so but this here... is a side dinette seating. It's great if you want to sit and face each other and still have view out the window. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Now, what is this uh, style here? Yeah, so this is our rollover couch uh, model. And what's really great about it is that this sofa rolls over into kind of the largest extra bed that you can have in the campers. So let me let me try this. I haven't seen that actually. Yeah, and you'll have to move the cushion over there. <laughs> you won't be able to get it down without it behind you. Ah, <laughs> always, always, I'm always messing up. Okay, let me try this. Yeah, holy cow. So I'm just over 6'2". Ah. <laughs> Take actually, a nap now. Yeah, totally. Now we've seen the smaller ones, the mid-sized trucks, the six and a half foot beds but now an eight foot bed version. Yeah, so this is our Granby. Um, it's for eight foot bed, full size trucks. Um, what you really gain in this model, for example, the front dinette, is you gain a lot of seating. So you can really sit four people in there, eat dinner, play cards, uh, hang out in there. You have a lot of count counter space here, lots of storage, nice fridge. Now, if that wasn't enough, you know, the eight foot version slide in, right? Um, if you want a little bit more space in a different style and functionality, you can put an aluminum tray bed right? Uh, this is Norwald, correct? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, this is a Norwald tray. So you would remove the bed of your truck, you attach the tray to your truck, and then the camper gets attached to the tray. And with the tray is you get lots of different options. You get drawers and boxes, um, extra water storage. Uh, really, really cool if you're going to really do a full-time commitment. Yeah, so there's some of the pictures. Um, this is from Australia, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the Australian, that's kind of where the tray bed was born, yeah, exactly. I think, because they have a lot of them over there and uh, like the water tanks would be in the in the bulkhead. Yeah, yeah. So you it's have, actually uh, oh, underneath here. Oh, this is the here. DEF um, for diesels. So here's the water tank um, back The here. water tank is on the passenger side going down here. Yeah, and you can do different lengths as well. Yeah, exactly. This. We make them in all different lengths. Well, Norwell does, we yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah. So then when you have this bed, 
you can put this on and you have more interior width. Exactly, because right? you don't have to clear the bed rails. So a flatbed camper, you end up with what seems like a lot more space because you're not having to fit it inside the bed of the truck. Yeah, and now it's a side entry. Exactly. Versus versus a rear like entry from the tailgate. So but tell me about the special interior. This is pretty nice. Yeah, so this model is actually one of our Woolrich editions. Uh, we partnered with Woolrich to sell only 100 of these. They have special finishes, special trims, um, some extra little special features. Um, just really nice, really nice inside. Yeah, I kind of like this kind of style. Yeah. And of course, you know, the counters are still here. And this is what we're talking about. Just kind of the width of it. You know, you can have a dinette this way and still have lots of space. What about pricing? Like these largest ones, how, where do these start? Yeah, so these start at around 36,000 um, because there's a lot more material and there's a lot more work that goes and in, gets involved with putting these together. And then the bed is a separate cost, right? Yes, exactly. The, the tray bed. The tray is exactly, yeah. it's different. And one of the other cool things, which none of our other campers have, are this has under bed storage. So this really, uh, you know, expands your storage space. Very neat. And of course, campers come with their own battery systems as well. You can do lithium ion batteries, you can do AGM. Um, and here's uh, just a demo of the shower head. Uh, there's usually one, or if you get this option, there is one on the outside, which just simply connects to the uh, water system inside the camper. Um, and there's sometimes, there's some versions where you could also have it uh, connect inside and you can put a curtain inside <laughs> and actually shower indoors, believe it or not in some of their flatbed models. And one of the beautiful things about the Project M camper is that you can build out the bed or carry whatever you want in your bed uh, when you're actually not using the camper itself, the camper top. So David built this out. We showed it to you in the last episode in progress. Now let me show it to you finished. He did everything on the budget. Uh, designed it himself, built it out of plywood, uh, got these bars and then built a table. So uh, let me show you how that works. You see this? This is the uh, what David calls the Aztec pyramids. Well, actually it's the mounting for the table. The first use case is you can mount these bars. And then mount this on top of it. Oh yeah, this is a massive table. Only David can build this. <laughs> Actually, if you like this design, let us know because uh, David uh, has some plans. So potentially if you um, really like the solution, let us know in the comments below or email us at askatfltruck.com. By the way, when David built this table, he didn't have the uh, Project Tam, so he couldn't measure exactly. He was guessing and going off the specs on the website. So the final moment of truth is, will it fit? Of course it fits. <laughs> Only David can do this. He did it with, well, he wanted to match the height. He did that. He wanted to match the width. He did that. And, and this is why it's so big. So you can lay down. So Melanie, uh, along our journey, we're kind of bringing our audience for, uh, for, for the ride. So we geocached these, but because we're starting our journey here, yes. <laughs> thanks to you, I uh, wanted to leave one here. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. So guys, uh, when you see the video, uh, you'll be able to look up, I'm not going to say the address, just <laughs> four wheel campers in California, Woodland, California, come by. And if you're first, you can get uh, there's a few goodies in here, a t-shirt, a belt buckle, etc. like I said. Um, and then please send us an email, uh, ask at tfl.com. Let us know that you found it. Well, there you have it. The transformation is complete. Now our F-150 Lightning turned into an electric overland camping truck. But there's still a lot of unknowns. We need to figure out exactly how much weight we added, what the efficiency is. I want to try to improve the aerodynamics on this setup just a little bit for our journey. So come back to alttfl.com and also this channel. We'll have several episodes for you. Uh, on next episode, I'm going north. 
towards Oregon and Seattle, Washington. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next one.